Weird Al is a remarkable force of nature. For all these years, he's kept his ear to the ground and his finger on the pulse of popular culture, and still, in that uncomfortable position, he's managed to play a mean accordion. He's got a new CD collection of the essential Weird Al Yankovic, and a new children's book called When I Grow Up, to which many of his fans will respond, Don't do it, Al! So much of your stuff plays on pop culture, dominant, the dominant culture, right? Ideas that are common to our, to our, our society. Right. Right, and, and you know, the, the joke is so much funnier if, if, you're, if you're hip to what's going on. Right. Okay. Um, and back then, there was a dominant culture, and that was the culture. Everybody understood it pretty well. Mm -hmm. And now it's so splayed, more and more all the time. It makes my job a whole lot more difficult because that's exactly what you mentioned. I mean, even 20 years ago, uh, people watched MTV. Right. For the videos, they actually paid videos, right? And there yes. was that, that the commonality of people like were familiar with the videos. You could you could make little you know arcane references to bits in, in music videos, and people would get the joke. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, the, the our culture is so diversified now, so split up and so segmented that it's even hard these days to tell what a hit song is because maybe not everybody is listening to Chameleon Air or you know whatever happens to be you know a certain genres you know. You know, superstar at the moment. It's it's really split up. You can't really look at the charts anymore because right. the Billboard Top Ten doesn't necessarily reflect what people are listening to or what videos they're watching. Um, I just I have to kind of kind of be aware of a lot of different charts and uh, different video channels and, and radio station playlists and try to like figure out the zeitgeist and figure out like like what would make sense to parody so that people would know what I'm talking about. Right. It used to be that there was this communal experience and everybody was watching the same thing and everybody's focus was sort of narrowed. Uh, that's, in a way, I mean, it's, it's not a bad thing because it, it kind of opens uh, up the field to a lot of people that wouldn't have access to it before. But because of, the, the, uh, because of portals like YouTube, uh, I will never, ever again be the first person to parody a song or, right. or necessarily even, even have the same idea. Because, like, you know, right. if... if, if uh, if I had done Eat It this year, 2009, yeah. uh, I would be probably the 5,000th person on YouTube to have an Eat It video. Right. You know, it's just like, it, it, it's, I, I'll never be unique again. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it's a great thing because, you know, back when I was starting out, I mean, you pretty much had to have a record deal yeah. to get noticed if you wanted to do funny music. And, and for a long time, I was sort of like the only person uh, doing it that people would even be aware of. And now, if you have a funny video, Millions of people can see it, and you know, cream rises, as they say, and and you you can really get noticed if you've got, you know, something that people want to see. That must make your job harder. You just have to kind of like do a bit more research, and and it is a little bit more scatter shot, like you said. I mean, you know, I, I try to hit as many genres as I can on a single album, and and some songs people might not be familiar with, and some songs they they will. A lot of people uh, that just aren't following pop culture or pop music that much kind of uh, look at my albums is sort of like their, their time capsule catch-up, like, oh, what was big in music in the last two or three years? Oh, I'll just put on the Al Yankovic album. Yeah. Uh, uh, humor can be, like, very educational. I mean, I look, certainly learned a lot about, you know, politics before my time and, and culture before my time through back issues of Mad Magazine mm -hmm. and the paperback books and things like that. And it's, it's um, you know, I hate to say it. I mean, I, I was a decent student in school, but I think I probably learned more American history from, uh, from Mad. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Class. Start the interview because I'm. I'm I, I think this has just been a chat up to this point. Okay. <laughs>